One, two, three, four, five audience members. I am doing a speech about the Y2K. Um, it occurred the end of the year 1999. Um, and emergencies do not happen to those who are prepared. Um, and my and preparations were the biggest part of the Y2K bug. And my father would know that personally, since he is a first responder. And he prepared for many, many months about the different scenarios that could happen and what he could be faced with. The Y2K was overhyped and the problem was that they thought that the computers were going to crash. They thought that they were going to glitch out and start a nuclear warhead because the computers cannot um, withstand the year 2000. They just can't. They just can't change to 2000. The first two letters, numbers, numerals, 19 are stationary, and so they just didn't know what was going to happen because they've only ever changed the last two digits. So what was going to happen if all the numbers change? Um, they just didn't know what was going to happen. So I mean, it was really skeptical. Some believed that some didn't, but most of them prepared anyway because you just never know. Better safe than sorry. And my dad had actually had to. Um, New Year's Eve show up at the firehouse at 9 at night and he was able to bring his wife and his children me and my sister and so we all stayed over at the firehouse for a New Year's party the first and only um, and everyone was there all the first responders from the town um, many from the state just everyone EMTs firefighters etc etc they were all there. Um, and I even interviewed my mom for a little bit. She was saying that she was also one of the people who were skeptical, didn't think it was going to happen. She still went out and bought powdered milk and gallons of water just in case, because you never know. Um, and she thought that the New Year's party that the firehouse held was a brilliant idea because she was with her husband. She knew he was safe. She was with her children. She didn't have to, you know, worry about them. Um, and my dad also thought the same. I mean, he didn't have to go out on a call and leave his wife behind. She was right there next to him. Um, and in the end, all the planning was for nothing, um, which my dad said kind of bugged him a little bit. He wished something would have happened because all of the time and effort that he put into it, I mean, like they had to plan for all the scenarios, what if banks were gonna get robbed, what if people were gonna go crazy, um, what if people burnt some buildings down? I mean, there's no internet. <laughs> so the world will start to crumble. Um, and one thing I do remember him saying was that he, it was very stressful and he had a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. Um, so, I mean, he felt like he had everybody's eyes on him and that if anything went wrong, he had to fix it with him and his buddies. Um, and then after 12 o'clock midnight hit, everybody, you know, got a little bit relieved, you know, people were able to go home. Some people stayed around for games and a little bit of alcohol after they were told everything was okay. Um, and the joke's all on us. Ten years later, we still have canned fruit and veggies in the pantry. <laughs> so, that is it.